What's going on, family? Welcome back to Israel's Movie Reviews. And thank you for clicking on my channel. And today we're going to be discussing Captain America Civil War. Now, this movie, I was looking forward to it for so long. Um, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, just left me speechless. That movie was so breathtaking uh, with the plot, with the cinematography, just the way the action scenes were dealt with. Um, the villain of that movie slash kind of anti-hero, the way they utilized uh, Nick Fury in that movie, the way they introduced uh, Sam, you know, the Falcon in that movie. Uh, that movie to me is it's a perfect movie. Um, to me, that stands with the test of time, like the Dark Knight and <clears throat> movies like that. So this one obviously was going to have some shoes to fill, but I had, I had a tremendous, tremendous confidence in the Russo brothers, which... They were, came back to direct this one as well. So, was this movie up to par with The Winter Soldier? Yes. Was it better? In my opinion, it wasn't. But it came very, very close. This was a great film. Um, it's a very solid, fun, if not quite the spectacular extravaganza that you probably expected, even though it does hit a lot, a lot of points. So, we're going to get straight into it. You know, the as we know, the first... Captain America film was a lot of fun, um, and Winter Soldier, you know, went higher, and they definitely took it to bigger heights with that bolder and darker approach that the MCU, for the most part, was lacking up to that point, while not forgetting the entertainment value, um, and that was even better. So, the Civil War, <clears throat> like I said before, in my opinion, is not as quite um, as good as the Winter Soldier, but it's a little better than the first film. In my opinion, it might not be quite the spectacular extravaganza that people were um, looking forward to, but it did come out um, on top in a, in a lot of people's reviews. Um, as a reviewer, I was expecting, uh, I was just expecting a little more, you know, um, but it's a really, really solid film. It's fun, uh, has great entertainment, and it's on the top end of Marvel's output even with um some of the faults it has as a film you know granted civil war is not perfect so the detractors can think again you know before accusing most of our reviewers that you know this is a real review so you know obviously i don't get paid by marvel or anything like that so you know this is going to be a genuine review you know i'm gonna give you the negatives i'm gonna give you the positives and i'm gonna give you a few of my mixed aspects about the movie and You know, is at this point, is anybody going to point out that you could still see a Marvel movie without feeling like it's criminal or it's an offense to not fully uh, approve the film? And when I mean approve the film, I mean give it a 100% score, right? Um, no, you can give it a 98, you know, just like this film. Um, this film to me, it was like a 95. You know, as with what's not quite right, I'm going to start with Civil War, was I feel like it was a little overstuffed. Occasionally undercooked at times. Um, Civil War had a lot, a lot of subplots um, and, and characters while actually dealing with a vast majority of... Uh, it's hard to, to, to say without spoiling things. And I don't want to spoil it, even though a lot of you should already saw this movie. But, um, you know, six years ago when this movie came out, you know, people were lined up and people knew from the trailers that there were going to be many superheroes in this film. And a lot of people didn't even know that the bad guy would be just a normal man. You know, the villain of this movie is Zemo. And he's, I think, one of the best things about the film. But I feel like his character is underutilized. Um, Zemo has his own story, you know? Um, he lost his family in uh, Age of Ultron, and he has reason for the the things that he does. And he knows he's not going to beat them hand to hand. So what he does is he engages to the point where he makes sure that they go against each other. Uh, this man is very smart, you know? He goes in death. And in this this movie definitely definitely does that. He goes in death with different 
personalities. Um, it engages you and interests you and appreciates the complexity given to this uh, villain, uh, you know, because he's using his mind. And there was a sense that he wasn't completely crucial to the main story at times. And it could have been different things. You know, you got the introduction of the Black Panther here. Uh, you got the introduction of Spider-Man. You know, there's no Thor, there's no Hawk in this film. Um, it really grows on you, especially his entrance. It's a bit clumsy, but I'm not gonna lie, it's well done. It makes you think that, does he really belong? And, well, and I'm talking about Spider-Man. Um, you know, however, Civil War also does a huge amount right. You know, it looks amazing from start to finish. Uh, the gritty but audacious look of Winter Soldier makes a welcome return while the cinematography in this movie is very, very stylish. Uh, the editing is crisp. If slightly occasionally confused in the airport action sequence, uh, wasn't one of my favorite scenes. Um, well, the special effects in this were extravagant. Um, as they should be in an MCU film. Um, helped by a thunderously authentic sound. I love the sound of this movie. Um, it doesn't cause visual discomfort. You know, it doesn't give certain scenes even more real attention than it already had. Um, the music, again, has a lot to do with the, the, the greatness of the film. You know, it has that rousing excitement and that haunting intensity that while being no less memorable than the music in the previous Two, two films. Um, the action sequences in this movie are hella strong. You know, the opening sequence starts the film with a bang, with its tragic consequences being genuinely affecting. While the airport scene to me is tense, um, it's enormous, it's uh, it's fun, it's very engaging, thrilling. Uh, though, because with, there's so much going on in that scene, um, the camera editing does at times struggle to keep up with certain characters, but the best of all, to me, this film is the climax, you know, which had much more intensity and was surprisingly rich um, in conflict and emotion, you know? The direction is astute and definitely balances all the different conflicts and tone shifts. While the script is very smartly written, the Russos definitely took their time um, directing this, man. They, they get all the nuances perfect, um, nothing really passes these guys. You can tell that they were fans of the comics originally. Um, and also, you know, you while the script is very smartly written with these lighthearted moments, uh, like the Spider-Man and the introduction of Ant-Man in this, um, from his film before this, um, being witty and hilarious while not once being at odds uh, with more thought-provoking and serious elements, which um, never get bogged down in too much talk. That's what I like about the movie. The, you know, whenever they speak or they have a dialogue, it always leads to something or it's about something or it's an Easter egg. There's no waste in the dialogue. The story, while, like I said before, it's a bit overstuffed and undercooked in places, but it's never dull. Um, never feels too stretched or thin. Always makes sense, even with the parts that needed more development. Um, and it's endlessly riveting right up to the end, which is an achievement for a two hour and a half film, which is, has a lot going on to it. Um, likewise, while some characters are more interesting than others, which is the standard for any film like this, especially with a cast as large as this also, the characters are very intriguing and they're engagingly written with distinct personalities and realism. That's what I love about these films. You know, they have so many heroes in them but they're all very different from each other. Not one of them is like the other. Um, and lastly, man, you gotta talk about the, the performances, you know? Of uh, their great performances all across the board with uh, Ari of, uh, I think, Marissa Tomei as Ame. Uh, she comes out, uh, she's gorgeous. I'm not gonna lie in the role, but she comes, she doesn't come out as an Ame to me, uh, even though she doesn't have a big role in this film. But it's small enough to give the impression that uh, Marissa told me in age and manner did not fit this character. But I like the way they went with it. You know, as as I saw throughout the years and I see, I keep watching these films, I'm like, okay, I got used to her, you know? But um, much of the film, however, is dominated by the usual suspects, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans, both whom are no perfect as Iron Man and Captain America. Uh, you have Elizabeth Olsen, 
who in this movie is pretty dry. She's flawed in my point of view, but she's very sympathetic. Um, I think that was purposely. Maybe they wanted to take that direction because she was going to be so pivotal in the future films. Um, you have Scarlett Johansson, who's wonderful, sexy, um, fearless. Uh, that's all I can say about her. She's amazing, like always. Paul Rudd, man, is a breath of fresh air. You know, with his introduction, it actually feeling like a character who belongs here. You know, he he was amazing. You know, um, he's not there just for comic relief. He actually plays a pivotal role as well. Tom Holland, the introduction of him, man, he brings this endearing enthusiasm to Spider-Man, especially for his first um, endeavor, right? Um, you have Paul Bettany as Vision, who's elegant and awesome. Uh, like always, Sebastian Stan has that authoritative presence. I love the banter between him and Falcon. Uh, man, Anthony Mackie, I think that way he was born to play the Falcon. And I'm glad that, you know, going on in the future, he has a pivotal role as the future uh, Captain America, spoiler alert. And, you know, to, to finish it all, you have Daniel Bro, who played Zemo, and he has the right degree of arrogance and is able to convey this menace while only doing a little as a whisper, you know, in this film. Uh, and he, he had a dynamic role, very important. And I love the way they left it open to the point where he comes back in Captain America and the Winter Soldier show. And he plays another pivotal role as he continues to play these mind games. Um, I love his character. He, to me, was one of the first villains that you really pay attention to in this whole MCU universe. And, you know, lastly, you know, we're gonna mention Chadwick Boseman, may he rest in peace, who characterizes the Black Panther in essence, you know? with this wounded pride, uh, with dignity, and, and this gravitas about him, you know, after losing his father, and, you know, trying to get revenge, but doesn't really get the revenge because ultimately he let Simo live, you know? He, um, man, it was a good preview to him in this film, and overall, very, very solid film. You know, it's just to me, Missiano being a spectacular, uh, film like the others were um, but um, this movie simply is an 8 out of 10 it's another fine outing by Marvel you know the series goes from strength to strength and really enjoyed it check it out let me know what you think let me know what you thought about the film and let me know if this was one of the best villains so far in the Marvel universe and as we go along with these next couple films and these next reviews let me know Let's rank them, all right? But that's my review. Until the next one, appreciate you. If you like this review, hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Share this video. Until the next one. Peace.